Soy Rubén Vigil, jefe de prensa de la Fundación Princesa de Asturias. Bienvenidos a la rueda de prensa que van a ofrecer a continuación los científicos galardonados con el Premio Princesa de Asturias de Investigación Científica y Técnica. Eh, recuerden que es una rueda de prensa telemática. En primer lugar, deben levantar la mano cuando quieran formular una pregunta, bien físicamente o con la aplicación digital que permite la plataforma, y también pueden utilizar el, el chat de Zoom. A continuación, les daré la palabra y podrán formular sus preguntas indicando a quién va eh, dirigida. Tenemos con nosotros al profesor Ugu Shahin y a la doctora Oslem Tureshi. Comenzaremos directamente con las preguntas. Tenemos una pregunta de Senhan Boleyi, de la agencia Nadolu, agencia turca de noticias. Dice, ¿qué ha cambiado más en su vida después de descubrir la vacuna contra el coronavirus? ¿Qué opinan de la vacuna Turcovac que se ha desarrollado en Turquía contra el coronavirus? First of a first question, um, what has changed most in our life is that uh, we um, are very happy and feel blessed that we indeed uh, could contribute uh, to the response to the pandemic and that uh, we could contribute to the process to show that science can conquer such crises which are of global scale. With regard to um, other vaccines they, uh, which are being developed, the development of all other vaccines uh, via the different platforms is very important because every vaccine which is well developed is approved by authorities based on data will help us to be much faster to pr provide the entire world as a scientific community with um, uh, a vaccine which will help us to um, uh, uh, con conquer this pandemic. Also, the Turkish vaccine is important in this process. Una nueva pregunta de la agencia Anadolu. ¿Cuántas pruebas han hecho para crear la vacuna contra el coronavirus? ¿Cuál fue su primera reacción cuando la descubrieron? So the vaccine was developed um, without any shortcuts. Uh, so uh, uh, the vaccine went to, to preclinical research, uh, testing for toxicology before we started the clinical trial. We had a phase one clinical trial. Actually, we had, we had multiple phase one clinical trials since we tested several vaccine candidates. We selected uh, one vaccine candidate for a phase three clinical trial with more than 40,000 uh, individuals who have been vaccinated. And this was the large clinical trial until the vaccine was authorized. And after that, we did uh, a number of other clinical trials in younger uh, individuals and in kids. And some of these trials are still ongo ongoing. Uh, so the, uh, this, this, this vaccine is based on, on clinical data of more than 60,000 subjects uh, plus Uh, more than more than uh, five, six uh, million people who have been evaluated in real world studies afterwards. There's a huge data set now confirming the safety and efficacy of the vaccine. And I think what uh, is also important to add is that prior to uh, those um, uh, uh, investigations and studies, uh, Ugo has pointed out there is three decades of research into the platform and into the drug class and also of development uh, which on which we could build the COVID-19 vaccine development. It did not come from nowhere. Tenemos una nueva pregunta de Jaime Martín de la agencia EFE. Dice, algunos de sus colegas con los que comparten este premio nos decían estos días que no creen que sea necesario reformular las vacunas para hacer frente a las nuevas variantes. ¿Comparten su opinión o creen que las mutaciones de la COVID-19 obligarán a cambiar los actuales inyectables? ¿Serán necesarias vacunas hechas a medida como se hace con la gripe? 
Um, this is a question which we carry with us uh, because we have to evaluate uh, this question for each and every new variant. For all the variants which have already emerged and are circulating, including the Delta variant, the vaccine uh, with, in the form it is now is uh, providing sufficient and very high protection. Um, it does not need to be adapted to the current variants. However, because this is a new virus and uh, it can emerge into variants which are escaping from the, uh, from the protection uh, by the current vaccine uh, variant, uh, format, uh, we are continuing to test this for each and every newly emerging variant. Should we observe that one of those variants in the future is not covered anymore, we have a technology which allows us to very fast adapt to the new variant. It's like a legal system. You just exchange that part which has changed. Tenemos una pregunta de Ana Ranera del Comercio. ¿Esperaban que la ciencia reaccionara tan rápido a la pandemia y desarrollara en tan pocos meses las vacunas? Gracias. Could you repeat the question, please? Sí. ¿Esperaban que la ciencia reaccionara tan rápido a la pandemia y desarrollara en tan pocos meses las vacunas? Yeah, this is this is really one of the wonderful wonderful insights that that uh, that uh, we had and uh, um, that science could respond uh, respond so quickly. And it's not only the science, but uh, but uh, many people in the in in the society. It's healthcare workers. It's people who contributed to the vaccinations. It's physicians uh, who did the vaccinations and informed the the people about the safety and efficacy of the vaccines. It's also the media uh, who helped a lot yeah, uh, to inform, inform the public in an in a, uh, in a excellent manner. Therefore, this is really a success of the whole society, not only of science. And it shows us uh, that mankind can respond quickly and in an effective way if we work together. Tiene la palabra Jorge, de Europa Press. Sí, hola, eh, buenos días. Eh, quisiera referirme a la aplicación de la tecnolo tecnología ARN mensajero en la lucha contra el cáncer. Al contrario que frente al virus, que es igual para todos, entiendo que requeriría un tratamiento individual, una especie de vacuna personalizada para cada persona y para cada tumor. No sé si lo he planteado bien. En cualquier caso, quería saber cuándo cree que se podrá ver aplicada esa tecnología frente al cáncer y si no piensan que habrá que afrontar un problema ético, porque entiendo que será costoso económicamente y solo podrán acceder las personas con más dinero. Gracias. Thank you, Jorge. This is an excellent question and a question with which we are dealing for many years now. It might sound like science fiction that you manufacture an on-demand vaccine which is individualized and unique for the patient who gets it. But this is how we started many years ago and that this is also what made us interested in mRNA because mRNA has the potential to develop such a vaccine and to do it affordably in the future. We are conducting clinical trials since 2012 with vaccines where we analyze the patient's tumor, the cancer patient's tumor, um, design a vaccine and manufacture it as mRNA and bring it back to the patient within four to six weeks uh, in a race against the tumor. We have treated uh, before the pandemic hit, um, hundreds of patients worldwide with this vaccine in clinical trials. And uh, we have seen that it is safe. We have seen that it induces very strong activation of the immune system precisely against that patient's tumor. And we also have seen that we can achieve shrinkage and control 
of tumors because these are patients who have already their tumor masses. We are con continuing to develop this vaccine and uh, it is now in uh, large clinical trials. We will see within the next four to five years how successful it is if it is compared with the standard treatment these patients uh, otherwise would get. This is a very rigorous scientific development process and I think that such vaccines will be feasible and will be part of our uh, standard clinical care. And in terms of affordability, the reason why we choose mRNA many years ago for this purpose is that with all the, imp uh, with all the um, uh, progress and advance advancements in other parts of science, for example, cloud-based manufacturing approaches, automatization, synth synthetic biology, this uh, will become affordable. So it's it's not science fiction anymore. Tenemos una nueva pregunta de la agencia Anadolu. Alisa McMurtry pregunta: Mientras en, muchas, en muchos países eh, tenemos, mientras muchos países tienen más que suficientes vacunas, eh, simplemente hay un, solo hay un 37% de la población que ha sido vacunada. ¿Qué opinan eh, sobre llevar vacunas, hacer llegar vacunas a más países y cómo creen que se debería hacer? It is it is our goal from the very beginning to to make our vaccines available uh, available to everyone on the planet uh, um, uh, who who uh, needs the vaccine and and uh, we have accomplished or we are going to accomplish. Uh, until end of 2021 uh, to share more than 3 billion doses worldwide. Our vaccine has been sent so far to more than 140 countries worldwide. And, uh, and in 2021, we will have about 1.2 billion doses which were shipped to low-income and middle-income countries. And next year, we will continue with that. I am confident that all vaccine developers together will be able uh, to, to uh, enable a worldwide supply until end or until mid to the end of 2022 uh, to every every region in the uh, in the in the world. So the supply, the the number of vaccines should not be a, a, a limiting factor in 2022. La OMS, que cifra en 4,9 millones las víctimas de la pandemia, es una pregunta de la Agencia EFE, alertaba ayer que si no aumenta la vacunación en los países donde las tasas de inmunización aún son bajas, su número podría duplicarse en 2022. ¿Creen que liberar las patentes de las vacunas o conceder licencias a terceros podría ser una parte de la solución? Um, uh, all, uh, the, the discussion about uh, around uh, patent wa wafers is uh, driven by the by the uh, very ethical uh, objective and goal to provide uh, vaccines also to low income and middle in income countries as fast as possible. However, the patent wafers are not the solution to it they even might harm. We have a different approach, as many of our peers have. Uh, we have an approach uh, to a stepwise uh, um, uh, enable uh, this uh, equality of distribution. The very first step in which we are already now is to deliver vaccines there from the production facilities we have at other places, vaccines to, for example, African countries. And this is already happening, as Ugo has pointed out, 40% actually of our vaccine del deliveries go to those countries already today. But this is not sufficient. We think this is the opportunity to make uh, those countries self-sustainable. So we have already started to, uh, in a stepwise approach, uh, build uh, uh, production facilities regionally in order to, um, on the one hand, deliver right away and produce there, but on the other other hand, help those countries to set up their own ecosystems and learn the skills. This is not trivial. Such a vaccine production is a 50,000 step 
process and needs know-how. And we, will, uh, we want to ensure that that will take a bit of time, but we think that is, it is worth the effort. Sí, nos queda tiempo para una última pregunta. ¿Cómo ha sido trabajar en el desarrollo de la vacuna bajo la presión de, un, de una necesidad tan inmediata? When we started our work in, in January uh, 2020, it was very clear to us that we need to develop the vaccine in shortest possible time without uh, taking any shortcuts. So therefore, we implemented with our team um, a 24-7 program, so that means we implemented shifts with, with our, our colleagues uh, so that, that also in the night people came in to continue the experiments and also on the week and the experiments were continued. And everyone working on this vaccine were in an extremely focused mode. It, uh, so we didn't realize what happens, happened outside, but we, have, we, were, we were focused to, to, um, to do our work in an extremely timely manner. And, and uh, having now this responsibility uh, gave, us, gave us the opportunity we really uh, to, to, to come to to um, uh, 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 to come up with an extraordinary and un unbelievable uh, focus and and success of the team and and uh, and now we are, we are realizing that what we did was actually impossible uh, and we made the impossible possible. <laughs>